Like it, it will need two months. We still have August um, and uh, September and October. Okay, so we have about three months and internships will be uh, by the end of November. So more than three months, like almost four. Okay, so there is time, but if you wait it until October, for example, a month before, it won't be ready. Okay, so make sure that you apply now if you, uh, if you require a working permit. Okay, I will try to remind you again, but please do, please ask your friends like what they are doing, are they applying, okay? Just uh, one my, my, Yep. Uh, so, sorry, I, I just uh, want to know like, uh, who should, should, should I contact with if I don't know what, what, what kind of documents that I need to prepare? Yeah, so I remember um, last year they employed a person just for this. Uh, Mindy Cha. Mindy, right? Mindy? Yeah, yeah, Mindy. Probably her name is Mindy. But you can always ask like, you know, student services, student advisors, they will give you the right email. Yeah, I remember her name was Mindy, like, and uh, she will like help you with all the things. It's like, it's a formal process, okay? But if there's, you know, there are always special cases. Okay, so please try to... Uh, uh, like some people or some students when they applied for a visa I think they applied also for a work permit so many students they had it like ready uh, but we need to make sure that it's ready otherwise uh, you need to stay and do your internship uh, in in MITT like we had a previous student who was accepted in an interview he was offered a place but he couldn't go okay so uh, he wanted to go like Okay, so it's not like it's not a bad thing to do your internship in uh, like in house at MITT, but uh, like if you are willing to go, you won't be able to do it. Okay, so uh, we need to talk about uh, something extremely important in C sharp, uh, which is the object class. So we have an object, uh, sorry, we have a class that called the object class. Let's take a look at that. So let me define anything that is an object. Object, let's call it OBJ equals new object. Okay, so I, I'm not really interested in this object. I just want to go to the class F12. Okay, so this is the class object. Okay, it's like the main class in C sharp. And we can call it the father of all classes in C sharp. Okay, now there could be like extremely special cases or something that, you know, the unmanaged code and stuff like, but let's say that this is the father, okay, or the base class for any class in C sharp. Like, so when we created a class um, website, Okay, or a class product. They are not inheriting from anything, right? Like I don't have anything here in inheritance. Okay, but they are like internally inheriting from the class object without you mentioning it. So let's take a look at, for example, when you say, uh, let's say, for example, this is the customer. We created yesterday a customer called Mike, right? So Notice, you know, Mike has an ID, an address, but you will notice some stuff that you didn't write, like to string. So I didn't write a function called to string in Mike, but I have it. So where did it come from? Okay, so to string and few similar functions, they are coming from the parent object, the default parent, see? to string in object. That's why anything, like anything you create in C-sharp, create an integer, create an, a class, a customer, a list of something, okay? You will always see this to string because it's from the default parent of everyone, which we, what we call the object class, okay? Now, so that's when 
do you remember when we said that you can't inherit from more than one class? This is not technically correct because you, you are inheriting from any class, okay, the one class that you're inheriting and from object as well. But the inheritance from object is special. It's done by default, so it won't make any complications. But uh, we, by default, we are inheriting from object, okay? So, inheriting from object, that means I can access all the public and protected functions in object, right? So, okay, public, 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 all of those. So, you will notice the equals one. We will talk in detail about the equals. Get hash code. That's something when we work with any type of hashing. Get type. Reference equal. So, we will take a look at those, especially the equals one. The equals uh, is very important for us. Uh, get hash code and get type are less important, but two string is extremely important, and that's what we will be talking about now. Okay, so you will notice that everything has access to two string because why? Because it's in the default parent for all classes, which is the object class. Okay, so. Mike has access to two string, like you created a category, right? So electronics dot two string. You will notice that it's everywhere. And when you, uh, for example, try to type a student, so let's type it here. So console dot write line, Mike. So why, why can you pass anything to write line? Like write line virtually can, take anything, okay? Because internally the right line will call that two string function for you. So it's like you said two string because that's what this function is going to invoke. And everything has two string, that's why everything will work with the right line. Like you, you can just write anything, okay? So let's see, for example, uh, what is the result of mike dot two string or for example, let's write another one. Order dot, no, not order, sorry. Mike's order. Okay, so Mike's order also has access to two string. So let's see what's the result. When I call the default behavior of two string, what, what, what am I getting? Do you remember when you tried before to write uh, or type a list, print a list? Some of you try to put a list directly in right line, and we say this won't work. You need a for each. I'm, I'm not sure if you remember what you were getting, but you were getting something similar to this. Uh, yeah, we need a read line, sorry. So you are just getting the name of the class. So imagine I sent a list also, it will tell you like system.collections.genic, it will just tell you the name, the full name of the class, okay? Which actually is not something that you really want. Like I wanted to type something meaningful, okay? Like when I'm saying, okay, write line mic with or without two string, okay, then I'm not getting anything meaningful, I'm just getting the type of mic. So in many cases, you want to override the behavior of two string. Like you don't want this default behavior of the function two string. You want to change it. And that's what we call overriding. Okay. So to override the two string function, all what we need to do is to rewrite it again in the uh, class that we want to change. So for example, you say when I call or when I type console.write line some customer, I want to see the first name plus last name. Okay, this is the two string I want. I don't want to see the class name just like this. Okay, it's totally, it's totally like um, I, I can't do anything with this. Okay, I want instead of console uh, app.customer, I want something like 
first name, then last name, then maybe the address, something meaningful that I can use. Okay. So, <coughs> so to override in C sharp, you need to use the keyword override and you need to use the same function name. So here I'm saying that, okay, my parent, the default parent object has two string. Thanks for that. But I want to change the code inside to string. I want something else. I don't want the behavior, the default behavior. Okay. So I want to return something like return. Uh, we said last name. String dot uh, format. I want um, the customer is a um, uh, VIP customer or regular. So here we can say, okay, write me the first. So here I'm just writing a string. Okay, I'm not doing anything special. Just just like any other console right line we wrote before. First name, last name, and then I want the type. Okay. So here I'm saying, when I call to string on any customer now, please don't use what my parent object is offering, which is writing the class name. Please use this overridden code. Is it clear what we're doing here? Um, someone wanted to ask, Saria? Uh, overriding is, I, I get that concept. Why would you use string.format to do that? Uh, well, well, that's because I'm using those special characters. Otherwise, I will use like plus plus or I will use the S dollar, you know. Like it, it's, I'm, I'm returning a string, so return whatever you want. There is string the join, there is that S dollar, but I really hate it. It reminds me of JavaScript, which I hate very much. Okay. But it's a string. Whatever you want, just return a string. Okay. So see the return tab is a string. So whatever you want, whatever you are comfortable with, that's totally fine. Okay. Let's try it out now. Hopefully you won't get any exceptions. Okay. So now instead of customer uh, or console application dot customer, the meaningless thing that I don't want. Now notice that two string changed its behavior. Now it's typing stuff like the customer Mike Smith is a regular customer. Like this is the two string I want. So what I did here, I overrided the behavior over uh, of two string. Okay. Now I'm able to use the console.write line or any way, any place I like to string, okay, uh, with some meaningful results. Of course, you will say, okay, where's the to string here? Okay, actually, write line will call the to string by default. So it doesn't matter if you write the to string here or you don't, it's the same, okay? Write line will do it for you. Okay. So it will invoke to string for you. You can keep it written, so you just uh, like make sure it's there, but uh, it's eventually the same thing. Okay, so now first, what we need to learn here. Everything inherits from object by default, from class object, this one. That's why you always see those extra functions, even if you don't write them. Equals, get hash code, to string, all of those. That's why they are everywhere. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing, if you don't like two string, and we will learn later that we don't like equals as well, you can override it. Because it's different, like writing a customer, the two string of a customer is different from the two string of an order, right? Okay, the creators of the class object doesn't know that you want last name and, and, and uh, full uh, first name, maybe you just want the last name, okay? So they can't create this code for you. They made a general two string that you can override, okay? So 
when you want to like let's let's try to override the two string in the order so for example what do you want to write in the order you can have just like the order number has a total cost of something and the status is something else okay roy you're raising your hand yeah yeah Mohammed. i just find uh something weird and i want to ask yeah like um like uh for for the for the customer type like you didn't assign any any like mic dot type equals something but in 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 the result like we can see it's a regular so is yeah, it it's the default because, because it's, it's it's the first oh, the value. default is the the first one yeah the default is zero oh, okay the first value okay okay, okay. thank you so if you switch them everyone would be vip by default okay so it will take the first one Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, let's let's try to change the behavior of the order, the the behavior of two string in the order. Okay, make it something like this. You mean do they override the two string thing on order class? Yep. Okay. But but I'm showing you the one I made in customer in case you want to have a look. Okay. So every time you want meaningful printing, okay, you can override two string and just call it everywhere. Like anytime in a report, in a debugging, for example, you are debugging, you are logging, okay. So instead of getting that class name, you can get uh, some stuff that are important for you. But you need to use the the keyword override, or you is optional. No, I can hear you. Yeah, it's here. It's it's mandatory in Java. I guess it's uh, it's not it's you don't need because everything in Java is virtual by default. Okay, here in C sharp is mandatory. Uh, like you can live without it, but uh, you will be doing something else, not overriding. We will talk about it in the next part of inheritance. Okay, notice that uh, it's virtual. That means you are allowed to override it. Okay, in, in Java, everything is virtual uh, by default. Uh, all the functions, I mean.
Okay. Let's do it together in the order. So public override. Of course, if the original one is protected, the operating one should be protected too. Okay. So you need to uh, stay with the same uh, level of accessibility. Okay, so one, you want to return something like uh, the order, then like give the number has a total cost of then the cost and uh, status of I just still, okay, just like anything. Uh, like order number. And total cost and status. So, okay. Let's start from zero. Okay. So any meaningful statement that uh, you think is uh, like works better for you. Okay. We will go back to class object at a later point. Uh, we need to talk about equals and we need to talk why the virtual keyword is important, okay? And we need to talk more about overriding and virtual things uh, in more detail, okay? But for now, uh, we just need the two string. So for example, in the assignment now, you can use the two string to print maybe meaningful information about your hero, about your monster, okay? Uh, whenever you need to use console.write line or whenever you need to use the two string in general. Okay. Uh, Mohammed. Yeah. Uh, so for line number 56, the, the string dot format is the, uh, the string, the S should be capital or? Oh, it's, it's an alias. So capital or small letter is the same. It's just an alias for each other. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What about this function? Okay, now we're done with two string and object. Okay, that was just like a lightweight new thing. I know you guys, you hate to finish the day just solving stuff without learning about a new thing. Okay, so we want to know all the customers who spent at least a thousand dollars on our website. So how to do that? Let's think about it. You have the customers, you have the orders for each customer. So what should I do? I need to calculate how much a customer spent. Now, if this customer spent more than 1,000, then I need to add him to the list. So those people, we can maybe send an email to them, make them VIP, you know, those are rich people. So you can do lots of stuff with this information. Okay, let's think about, of course, like nothing special in terms of algorithms, you just need to, to make it happen. 
Okay, there's no secret algorithm in here.
Andor. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's good. Let's wait for a few more results. I'm done too. Me too.
Okay, so we have more than one solution. That's nice since Millie was the first one to say she's done. Okay, then let's see your uh, solution, Millie. Okay. So get top spenders, the list. Okay, first list is to return the result. Then for each customer, what should we do? We, yeah, we need to Check get order. the total cost of all his orders. Yeah. Okay, so we have another total. Okay, it's called double total orders cost. Okay. So we have the the um, this total the order one and she's using total cost uh, in line twenty nine she's using order dot total cost now if this total cost is like null or is zero or like it's not calculated we have a function to do this job so okay total cost should be there but um, this function always assumes that the total cost is set otherwise if this total cost is zero we can just call the function you know remember the function we called calculate order cost or something so it, it's still one line okay it's still the same thing okay now after i calculate the total cost of all orders for this customer now if it's more than 1000 I will add this customer to the result, okay? So the whole idea is to go through all the orders for each customer and get the total cost for all orders for each customer, okay? If this total is more than 1,000, put him in or her in the list, okay? Uh, is there any question? Keep, keep your code, please, Mili. Is there any question? So if you are not able to do it yet, Okay, this is the idea, but it's very important that you try yourself and don't wait for the answer to be written. Okay, now it should look like, like something like this. There could be any like some small changes, but the main idea is this one. Okay, so I wrote something that the main idea is really different. Okay, um, I, okay. Let, let's see your code then. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Mary. Okay, so big spenders has set and then a list of big spenders to return. Okay, then for each order, if order, oh no. Yeah, well, this is good, but it's a different purpose. Why? Like here you are saying who made an order of 1000 and more in one order. Like here you are saying, seeing, is there a customer who made one order of $1,000 or more. Like here we are talking, like the question we want is talking about the total. Okay, so uh, how are you recording? I didn't give you permission. Um, I know there's a recorder up there. <laughs> okay. So we know who will fail this class then. Sorry, we can't hear you. Um, you are muted. Okay, so apparently Saria is using a third party application to record the class, okay? No, yes. this is a Windows basic and I forgot to ask you this morning and I need to uh, record for Ashley, so I did it. Yeah. I can well, show you, I only have up uploaded three videos, which is from two days ago. This is like, you know, $100,000 <laughs> fine. Like you, you will speak to the CRA very soon. Ah. Oh. Yeah, no. And it could, I, are you a citizen of Canada? No. Yeah, so then you will be deported as well. Okay, it's, it's like, oh. it's a very big crime here. Okay, oh. so uh, like uh, what you did, Saria, is you know, like you just saw if there is someone who spent 1000 in a single order. That's mm. what I guess this code. 
Uh, yeah, but what we want is we want to see like, did you spend a thousand or more in multiple orders in all your orders? Okay. Okay. The, this this function actually brings uh, get the big orders like someone who made an order of a thousand and more in a single one. Okay. So it's a, mm. a bit of a different story. I thought that was the challenge. Oh, okay. You want uh, that yeah. whole all together. Yeah, so the, the, the question says, return a list of customers who spent, spent at least 1,000. Spent, like, you know, spent in the website. It doesn't mean like it's like should be in one order, okay? Mm. Or two or three, like all your spending, okay? okay. Yeah, so if, if you got the idea, let's try to write like the next one now, okay? Okay. okay. Yeah. So... So that's the first one that we need to be written. Okay, uh, let me share again. Uh, okay. So that's the first one uh, that we need to write. So please, if you didn't write it uh, so far, please do. Okay. Now the next one, what is the most popular product? What does that mean? That means what is the product that was sold the highest number of times? Like I have a product, for example, so many people are ordering iPhones and I sold like iPhones more than anything else. Of course, regardless of the price. So maybe you are selling something a lot. It's cheap. That's fine. But what is the product that sold uh, the most number of times? Okay, regardless of its cost. Okay, so we need to know this information. Okay, let's think about it. We have a few minutes to think about it, then we will keep it as a homework. Okay. <coughs> if you are able to do it now, very nice. If you're not, you can do it after the lab. Of course, don't forget that you have a quantity. Like, uh, like a single order doesn't mean you sold one piece from the product. Maybe you sold a thousand pieces in one order. Okay.
Okay, <clears throat> so let's keep this question as um, <clears throat> homework. Okay, it's, it's pretty simple. It's, <clears throat> sorry, it's, it's not that hard. Okay, it's just you need, uh, needs you to be a little bit extra careful when uh, calculating uh, the numbers. Okay, so uh, tomorrow we will have uh, another exam. Okay, and just very similar to what we're doing here, creating classes, few functions. Okay, uh, there's no totally wrong or totally right uh, design. Okay, you will see that there are multiple ways to see the same uh, problem and to how to handle it in terms of OOP. Okay, so all what you need to prepare is just try to focus on uh, this design, okay? It's uh, pretty cleaner than the previous one. Uh, we had some functions and the exam will be very similar to this, okay? Yeah. Uh, Mohammed, I have one yep. question, sorry. Sorry, if sure. I sure. uh, Because it's all not <laughs> gamer. So can you please, uh, maybe tomorrow, can show us that uh, some successful previous project that somebody did, which you mentioned, maybe um just well, to, to have some picture how it should look like yeah. i don't know what does it mean <laughs> yeah i, I will try to i'll try to find it but the problem is they remove the files every every semester i'll see if there is but it's, okay. it's not a game it's just like uh turns like I, I i can like discuss with you or anyone else okay. maybe after the exam or when you start when you start working on it, let's see what you understand from it. Okay. 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 And so it's a main menu. First one will show statistics. Second one will show this. Third one will fight. So uh, every time you press a button, it's either your turn or the monster's turn. That, okay. That's it. Yeah. Until until your health or the monster health reach zero. And okay. now the game is over. And all it's based on random stuff uh, we are deciding which uh, weapon or armor has. yeah well yeah so you can now always start with the easiest things for example choose a random weapon or a random armor then a random monster then maybe okay. when you finish you can tell the user do you want to choose the monster and show him a list of monsters okay List means just one, two, three, four. So when I click three, that means I want the third option or fourth option. So it's, it's not really like a game. It's, it, it looks like a game, but it's nothing similar to real games. Okay, yeah, it's just I, like I a just design, yeah, design with that's... calculations. Okay. okay, but we can talk more about it. We, I, I have the same issue every time. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, okay. so. Let's see what you understand. We can talk about it. We can have a session in the weekend, maybe, just to talk if you have questions, okay? If anyone else wants to join. Okay, but it is pretty easy to do. Okay, let's finish the exam now, and then we can focus on uh, the assignment. Okay, yeah, let's go for a break, and then you will be with Zach in the lab, okay?